Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. A couple quick updates if you haven't seen it. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. is weighing in on the controversy down at the University of Rhode Island. There's not one controversy, there's two controversies. He's only weighing into one of them, and this is in regards to a historic mural that the university was going to remove that uh, came under fire, it was from the 1940s, came under fire for not uh, having enough diversity in the mural. It was a post-World War II painting in the student union. So uh, check that out. Uh, also, Go Local has an editorial uh, really condemning Bob Woodward on his failure to come forward once he heard from the President of the United States in February, really months before anyone else, that the President knew that the disease was deadly. He knew that it aerosolized when most states and other uh, elected officials did not and knew that it had the potential to be uh, catastrophic to public health. Bob Woodward sat on this for the purposes of his book, uh, and, and we take a look at that. Uh, let's go over to Balzano, Italy. Rebecca Cotto de Silva, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks as always for having me. Okay, so it's hot and heavy here in the United States as we move under the 60-day uh, period for elections. We had primaries here in Rhode Island. Uh, the coronavirus has neither gone away or become less of a political football. What's the state of the transmission and the amount of disease over in Italy presently? Yeah, our numbers are going up. Our testing is also up. The reproduction rate, I think, is something that is concerning to some people, but everyone, I mean, people are really calm about things. As I mentioned, there are local elections, so even for example, they found an unexploded World War II bomb in a construction site, and they're like, yeah, we're gonna, um, gosh, I don't even remember the word in English, but we're gonna take care of this situation after the election, basically, <laughs> this September, the 27th, and the election is the 20th and 21st. And so I don't even know if they can do anything at the construction site, because you don't want to really agitate a bomb. Um, and but yeah, even that is until after the election. So we don't have national. Uh, it's it's local elections here, but um, it's a pretty seems to be a pretty big deal. And uh, you know, I'm just conjecturing that there might be anything to do with the the two dates. But really, the focus here is on the elections. And then there was a, a terrible killing down in Rome last week in the near Rome last week. Um, where uh, a black youth was beaten to death by four white, um, four white youths, young adults, everybody. So that's been big in the news as well. We've been back in school here, and that's really, you know, coronavirus and our school reopening really hasn't been very newsworthy um, because of these other, this one big local event and then the other national event. Yeah, let's, let's talk about going back to schools. Uh, Prep and private schools, many of them in Rhode Island have already gone back to school. They went back uh, nearly two weeks ago, I guess. Um, in, in public schools are scheduled to open on Monday. There's still tons of controversy going on, battles between the Providence Teachers Union head, Mary Beth Calabro and, and Governor Gina Raimondo. Uh, has, you've been back in school for a little while. How smooth has it been? So far, so good. <clears throat> Monday was kind of a just these are the new rules day. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and because Olympia is in a new school system, basic, it's the same. It's unified, but one through five is elementary, and now she moved into middle. So they actually had some you know middle school prep, but a lot of sanitation prep and mask prep and all of that. But she's really enjoying it. We've already had one student test positive. So I think it was in a kind of a pre-K group. And so then that student and their family, I believe that student's family is quarantined. And then all the other students, I'm not sure if they're quarantined or in isolation, which quarantine is this very strict. You can't go out. It's a crime to go out. Isolation is uh, you've been exposed and we're going to test you and you shouldn't go out in that time, um, but I'm not sure that it's as, going out would be as serious as going out when you're actually under the medically supervised quarantine. Got it. Uh, how large is Olympia's school? 
Oof. So the middle school, there's about 34 kids in her class and about that in every other class. So they're broken into two sections. The third year has three sections, which I believe in the past was two sections, but because of the new classroom size limits, because of coronavirus, that middle school, that group has been broken into three sections. So the whole middle school itself, you know, 30, 60, 90, maybe it's 110 with uh, 35, 35, 40, I'm not sure, but um, the groups are pretty similar in size. And, uh, and so that's the middle school. And then all the other classes would be about the same. So maybe 30 times five, 150. So 200 kids in the school altogether, 250, I'm not sure. And, um, and are they mostly having um, uh, classes in the school building or are a lot of, is a lot of the instruction taking place outside? So windows, uh, windows are open and they're doing inside. The instruction is to take it outside when possible. I think that that could start happening next week, but for, for example, for her, and I haven't heard too much about other classes, but their teachers all need to know where the kids are at. So they've been having these sort of, it's not, it's, it feels like a test, but it's more of a placement quiz. Okay, we've got to do this, we've got to do this. Um, the gym is absolute, PE is absolutely outside unless weather doesn't permit it at this time. And um, the other classes, I think once the teachers have an idea of where the kids are, the other classes should uh, tend to have outdoor time or be moved outside. That might be much easier to do. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, finish your thought. I'm, I apologize. Oh, I just think that it's easier to do with elementary school kids because, you know, going around and saying, what's this? This is an oak leaf or this is this leaf is perhaps much more adapted to elementary than, um, than middle school, whereas they're, they're on sort of a more rigorous curriculum. Well, maybe you could take the middle school students over to see the undetonated World War II bomb. They might be more interested in that than in an oak leaf. But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, talk a little bit about just the, you know, how excited is your daughter and the other children being back in, into schools? They're so happy. I mean, everyone's just, you know, she said, oh, it feels normal. You know, it feels good. It's like. It, it just feels right. And, and she's really excited about middle school as well. But I think just being back and just being there was just so great. And she's so happy and she, she loves the teachers and she's experiencing a big jump. So um, as you know, in many foreign languages, there's an informal address and formal address. And so they've gone from calling their teachers like, hey, you, to right. professor, Mrs. last name. And so it's a big, it's kind of a big jump, especially for Olympia, because we don't have that division in English. Um, and it's sort of this, a mental thing to really make sure you don't say the wrong one, especially when you've been using the other one in the classroom setting for so many years. Right. And is her instruction in German or is it in an Italian? German. It, the, so German, which would include grammar, literature, and then nature, all that kind of science and nature is in German, math is in German. And then of course they have Italian and English. So it's funny, her English teacher was like, all right, so um, part of your homework is gonna be, be to bring a list of things for you to do because you're gonna be way ahead of everyone else and <laughs> just sitting there bored for a while, <laughs> so. I, I would welcome the English instruction for myself. The other two are far beyond my capacity. Um, <laughs> l let's go over to, uh, you know, the look and feel of the streets of Balzano now. What, what do, does it look like it did in September of 2019? Or does it look like more like it did in, in June and July with restrictions in place, not the full, full lockdown, but uh, still a lot of, of control, a lot of masking, a lot of social distancing. What, what does it look like today? It really depends on the day. Uh, obviously, inside of an establishment, you're going to have masks. So 
Monday, for example, we went to an Ifer market, which would be kind of like a Walmart or a Target um, for school supplies. And uh, it was a zoo. It was so hot. <laughs> Everyone was like sweating. And I think they're not allowed to, they may, they may be allowed to run AC, but there were still so many people packed in there getting school supplies because a lot of schools give you the list on the first day of school and then you're expected to be prepared by the second day of school. And then a lot of parents who have the ability to get the list online just don't get it. So that combination means everyone is packed in to these stores. And that was a mess. Everyone was, of course, in the mask. That was Monday afternoon. I went out Wednesday morning and it was very deserted in the streets. Um, and the usual, most people in a mask, some not. I think, it, yeah, Wednesday afternoon we went out again. She dyed the tips of her hair uh, red. So um, we went out again, and there was actually someone on a bus without a mask. And there was sort of a hot debate with other passengers about it. It was in the very back of the bus, but the bus itself was standing room only. People were elbows apart. So it really depends. It doesn't necessarily feel as crowded all the time, but there are definitely times where it's like, I know that this bus is supposed to be operating at 80% of capacity and it's at 110% of capacity because we're all squished in here. And, you know, there's a guy literally right next to me with no mask on. Um, it, it, you know, and a final, final question for parents, moms and dads here in Rhode Island who are getting ready for school to start. It's the first... Uh, in classroom learning for most Rhode Islanders since March. Uh, what's your recommendation as somebody who's been at it for a couple weeks? Yeah, so you know they they're very serious. The they're very serious about the masks and the distancing when in the classrooms. It's nice because they can take the masks off when they're a certain distance apart. They've got the windows open. Um, but just to really, it's, it's an airborne virus, I think, and that is, I think that now is not necessarily the time to enter into a debate. Now is the time to let kids have as close to a normal life as possible, and it's more normal to be in school with a mask on than to be at home in front of a computer while you've got a parent trying to work in front of their own computer. Uh, you know, that's, I think that's much less normal environment than people being in school and having to wear a mask. That's that's how it is. That's the response I've seen from all the kids. They All the kids I've seen are just so happy, so excited to be back. Um, and, you know, oh, my friend this, my friend that, and they, they, get, they get used to it. They adapt to the masks. They get to read eyes. Everyone's like, you know, I'm so much better at seeing if someone is, I think the word in English is smizing, right? Like, <laughs> you know, we can that's really that's see if, someone is smiling with their eyes at this point. And then kids are trying to see if they can smile without their eyes, or sorry, without their mouth, but with their, like to divorce the full face smile to see if they can do things, you know, just this, what kids do. Um, so I'm smiling with my eyes, but not with my mouth uh, to see how, how that goes. And if other kids recognize the smile and if they can master that sort of, uh, separation of things that usually go together. Uh, Rebecca, thank you as always for joining us. Uh, it's great to hear the insights. You guys are ahead of us and it's great to hear the perspective from Italy. We really appreciate you taking the time. Please stay safe. Please congratulate Olympia for being back in school. I'm sure she'll do great. We're all cheering for her here in Rhode Island. And maybe we'll start a fan club uh, uh -huh. for her. Uh, and, and for everybody else, we'll have Dr. Fine on. We're moving Dr. Fine from 12 noon to 1230 going forward, uh, in part to make sure we've captured the new updated state numbers that sometimes come out at 1130 and sometimes come out at 1215. So we'll have update on the state numbers. Uh, in that editorial today, Dr. Fine had weighed in yesterday on what he thought of Bob Woodward's decision to withhold that information for more than six months for his book. Um, and stay tuned for some more updates that are coming out uh, later today. Uh, Nelly Gorbea is having a press conference. Kate Nagel's covering that. I think that's live on Go Local as well. So stay tuned, stay safe, and please, please wear your mask.